Hello. Now, the latest news from the Coronavirus Task Force is not good. Possibly 100,000 to 200,000 Americans could die in as few as 30 days. When I heard that, I literally had to talk myself through what that meant. And my inability to grasp that readily created an awareness for me that we all might currently be in a state of pre-trauma. And if that is true, then understanding trauma and how it works can hold some important clues to us so that we can take steps to weather this impending storm. Now, trauma. Trauma happens when a person experiences an event that they don't have the resources or tools to deal with. So what's happening, the event itself, is part of, the, part of that um, equation, but so is the ability of each one of us to be able to understand what's happening and respond to that event. So let me give you an example. Let's say that Kyle Bush and I are driving together and we hit a patch of loose gravel and the car skids and then it spins and then it flips and it catches on fire. Now, it's highly likely that Kyle and I are going to have totally different reactions to that exact same event. Kyle is a NASCAR driver. He has experience with this. He has trained for this. He knows how to react and great because he probably saves my life another day at the office for him. But for me, that exact same event is likely to be traumatizing. It's too much information coming at me too fast and my brain doesn't have any experience to draw on. So when the brain can't process all of that information, it shuts down and it stops processing. So a traumatized person um, the brain doesn't process it, but your body is still going through the flipping and the, the, the rolling over. And so your body does have a memory that it went through something. Now, um, the rest of the time, your body tries to reconcile that information with your brain. So a traumatized person doesn't have a conscious recollection of that event as a whole um, significant event. Instead, it's fragments of subconscious or unconscious memory that try to connect through flashbacks or troubling feelings that just don't have any words to them or freezing in certain situations and not understanding why or nightmares um, that come up when you allow your subconscious to rest. Um, so let's remember the definition of trauma again. Trauma happens when a person experiences an event and they don't have the necessary resources or tools to deal with that. Now, so resources and tools make all the difference. That's why I do these. I want you to have the resources and tools you need to get through this period. But in this situation, we're not helpless. We do know that there are things that we can do. We can stay home. We can wash our hands. We can socially distance the way that we're um, being advised by the experts to do. And it's important to do those things mindfully that you say, I am staying home in service of getting through this. We have to acknowledge that there's something going on that's a little bit scary and that in service of this, we can do things. We do have agency in the situation and that we're doing them purposefully so that we don't feel helpless. And then um, trauma experts have also given um, some guidelines uh, that are really important to stave off trauma in situations like this because bad stuff is probably going to happen. And the more tools that we have at our disposal, the better we're going to do. So move every day. Make sure that you're moving. Trauma puts us in a, in a state of fear and paralysis. So even if you're in your home, even if you're um, in your own neighborhood, even if you're in your own backyard, move. Also, create a routine so that you feel like you're not helpless and at um, somebody else's whim. You can, even if you're uh, socially distancing and staying home, you can set a schedule for yourself about what you're going to do at what times during the day. And maintain connection. Maintain connection with nature by going outside for a walk by yourself, walk your dog, or go out in the backyard, um, and connect with other people that you care about. 
keeping those connections is extremely important. So these healthy mental habits are designed to help us get through this, these next few weeks together. So until then, please stay safe and stay savvy.